morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, ushering you in into the new weekend that is the beginning of March. Woo, we made it to March, folks, and there's a lot going on. I got a new dub and stuff. I got uh, more pre-critic judging movies that are coming out this weekend. Hey, I'm personally excited because it's a Disney movie that's coming out. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got some new city council stuff in which they're talking about uh, the Meals on Wheels program, March for Meals. I'll talk a little bit more about that and more later in the show. But let me be a little bit biased this morning because um, we have a lot more options when it comes to the uh, vaccine. And with the new uh, release of the Johnson & Johnson, may I mind you, single shot vaccine. I'm basically plugging the single shot because I'm not a big fan of shots. And if I can just get one shot and be done with it and contribute to the herd humanity so we can get back to normal uh, and I can go back into the studio and <laughs> I can go back to work, work working with the public. Uh, but yeah, uh, Biden also said this week is that we're in a major uh, forward momentum. They're uh, overstocking the supply and they said that every adult will be able to have a vaccine by the end of May. So uh, previous um, projections were July. So that's a big thing that's happening as well. Um, I wanted to also say uh, in terms of like the $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus package, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, but the one thing that I will definitely tell you that I've noticed from this is that the Democrats are saying yes, but, and the Republicans are just saying no. And that's all I'm going to say about that. You guys can look up more information on that. There's just a lot of stuff as well. Um, one of the biggest things that I also wanted to mention is that um, in other countries, they're having difficulties having the supply available to them. And one of the things that are actually good news for a lot of, the, for a lot of African countries, including Ghana, um, are getting some of this. And it's the World Health Organization has officially started administering COVAX, vaccines from the COVAX facility Gavi Advanced Market. Um, commitment, AMC. Uh, COVAX aims to deliver over 2 billion vaccines by the end of 2021. So far, the vaccines are given out to Ghana and uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, another big deal is that Puerto Rico is in the process of a statehood. Uh, it's, one can say that it's been in the process of statehood for the last 40, 50 years. But this one, it seems like it's moving pretty forward in that. And one thing you should know a little bit more about the history of Puerto Rico is it became a U.S. territory when it was won from the uh, Spanish-American War from the Spaniards. Um, and it's been a U.S. territory since 1898 um, when U.S. won it from the Spanish-American War. Alaska became a territory in 1912 for the gold rush. So uh, Alaska had statehood as the 49th state in 1959 and Alaska followed in suit with as the 50th state of that same year. Of course, more than 60 years have passed, and there are 16 territories that are officially part of the U.S. but have not gained statehood. American Samoa is another good example of a country that could be very close to uh, getting statehood as well. But of course, I'm assuming nobody likes it for many reasons. And one, it messes with the numeric, even 50 flag. Um, two, changes uh, is reluctantly supported these days. And three, you can't tell me what to do. Um, that's all joking aside, Puerto Rico is closer to the U.S. than Hawaii and Alaska. And uh, U.S. Ter territories do vote in popular vote elections, but as we've seen, as it's the electoral vote and electoral uh, numbers that actually count towards electing the President of the United States, so think about that. Uh, this hasn't been the first attempt and in many ways will face an uphill battle similar to past attempts. There's a lot of opposition for this. Um, uh, just the way that uh, Puerto Rico is being run and just a lot of stuff going on there. You can look at more inf information as well. But this week they had a press conference for Puerto Rico statehood. All right. Big news in Missoula. We're going a little bit back in time. About 100 years ago, uh, the historic Wilma Theater was built for Edna Wilma of the Wilma Sisters, a vaudevillian uh, light opera duet who would uh, perform around and was uh, basically... Um, caught the eye of um, uh, an older gentleman by the name of entrepreneur uh, William Billy Simmons. Uh, the William, the Wilma sisters, uh, uh, he married Edna. And after their marriage, he built a, the, the, the first steel frame building in the city of Missoula. And it would uh, basically cover the eight story uh, historic venue. It became a historic landmark in the 1980s when it was uh, 
recognized by the National Historic Documents. Um, let's see. Of course, you know, her, her husband suffered a stroke and died um, a couple of years later, and she became one a large business owner in 1950, um, where, where she, it was confirmed that she owned over 31 theaters across the western United States. She married her second husband, Edward Eddie Sharp, in a union for business as Eddie, for many people who are from Missoula and know uh, who knew Eddie, uh, he was Missoula's more flamboyant Missoula resident back in the day, and he is also one of the uh, inspirations for uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the characters in the Blue Velvet movie directed by Michael Lynch, who is also from Missoula. Sharp took over and started the Chapel of the Doves, which uh, had a pigeon by the name of Korohaku, who apparently could make exact change and preferred large bills. So the pigeon, Edna and Sharp, are buried in the Missoula City Cemetery. Uh, later on, the Wilma had various owners. Log Jam Presents um, made of major renovations and is the current owner of the Wilma Theater. Um, and yeah, so this this year would mark the 100th year anniversary of it. I mean, if you're interested in a little bit more of history, you can always go to Rock and Rudy's and you can see Eddie Sharp's uh, Chapel of the Dove, uh, which is located at Rock and Rudy's. Um, yeah. Um, and also, I wanted to say that MCAT will also post uh, one of the uh, stories in stones, one of the uh, uh, historic kind of telling of uh, people and places and important figures in the city of Missoula, uh, which... Uh, talks about the Wilma sisters and some of the history of, of the Wilma Theater. So we'll post that on MCAT's um, internet pages, YouTube, Facebook, and whatnot, just to kind of give a little bump to the historic Wilma Theater. Up next, we have a very special Zach show in conjunction with KBGA College Radio. Last Friday, we they had the uh, volume one of their... Uh, of their event that takes place every last Friday of the month. It was their kickoff event last Friday, and then the end of this month's uh, last Friday of this month. We'll also have another Zach KBGA collaboration. But without further ado, here is an original song by a local artist, uh, Elijah Jalil. Okay, this next song is really just a new song that I enjoy, uh, that I wrote recently. And I wrote Sun Sunrise. This one is about the sunset. Okay, let's get into it. It's a little different, so uh, let's try it out. This will be the first time. The sunset in the distance, you're consistent, and I still miss you when you're gone. Oh, the sunset in the distance, you're consistent, and I still miss you when you're gone. Oh, the sunset, yeah, in the distance, you're consistent, and I still miss you when you're gone. Oh, the sunset, oh, in the distance. You're consistent, and I still miss you when you're gone. All oh, the sunset glides, and I'm mesmerized. Yeah, I stay till night, mm, till I say goodbye, and it fair feels right. No. Bless you by my side Yeah, the sun sets high hey, I'll be back sunrise Oh, the sun set in the distance You're consistent And I still miss you when you're gone Oh, the sun set Oh, in the distance You're consistent and I still miss you when you're gone, oh, the sunset, yeah, in the distance, you're consistent. And I still miss you when you're gone, oh, the sunset, in the distance, so consistent. Uh, and I still miss you when you're gone, ooh, 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 yeah, ooh. Yeah, 
Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie whether it needs it or not. Everybody likes Moana, right? So let's dive right into that world once again and bring it to China in a fictional Chinese-type world called Raya and the Last Dragon. We have Mulan. If, uh, if it ha it was basi it's basically Mulan. If it had more action and more princesses, Mulan was not a princess, by the way. Uh, anyways, watch a movie where the Fellowship of the Dragons Note to self, um, pitch Fellowship of the Dragons to Netflix. This is a mo Disney movie, so you can expect to cry, laugh, and be excited, and uh, be too old to go to a kid's movie. I'm talking about myself. Every, every <laughs> Enjoy some good times uh, with, a gang, with the gang as they become even more annoyed by the fact that this movie needs a magic jewel to win the war for the Planet of the Dragons. Note to self, pitch Planet of the Dragons to Netflix. Um, up next, we got a movie that uh, basically is kind of a sequel to a, a very popular film from way back in the day. It's called Coming to America, with the additive to Coming 3 America, which probably won't happen because, hey, this is going to be straight to streaming. Remember, remember movies uh, that were made and produced by SNL way back in the day when um, the producer uh, of SNL was just like, I'm going to kind of leave SNL and maybe pursue more movie making stuff, and they made really good movies, and then SNL SNL kind of started poorly performing, and then they just kind of went back and was like, okay, we'll put more effort at SNL, I guess. Uh, but anyways, I sw <laughs> Okay, Coming to America welcomes back yet another franchise long thought dead. Um, wait, it, well, it wasn't a franchise, it was a single movie. But Eddie Murphy has ten kids to feed, and he needs to send them to college in another outing with Coming to America. Watch as we bring back familiar faces with some new ones because they gotta do a new generation. The prince will have to find a male heir to his throne because, um, patriarchy, that kind of stuff. But it's, uh, chances are this movie's gonna end with like his daughter getting recognized as the more uh, valuable one because the son is just kind of a screw up and they're just like, you know, we gotta avoid this military coup by Wesley Snipes, and okay, we're gonna do that. And then the woman, the, the daughter, turns out to be a lot more in line with it. Um, yeah, and James Joel Jones is still the dad in it. Um, hey, he's our most valuable treasure that we have. We have to protect him as long as we can. Um, but anyways, he goes, uh, okay, so, the, the, the thing I just, the, I, you, gotta, you gotta suspend a, a belief in this particular movie because Eddie Murphy apparently had a, a child with a lady that's not his wife, even though in the first movie it kind of mean that he was a hopeless romantic and he was not interested in hooking up with women, but I guess they're going to throw that all away and just kind of go right into it. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. It's like the whole point of this is blah, blah, blah. Anyways, suspend belief and watch this movie that will end with Eddie along with his daughter to run the country regardless of an ancestral guilt. Sorry, I meant family tradition. Um, Yakuza, like a dragon. <laughs> Yet we have another uh, video game franchise that's basically going to be like, hey, let's do GTA, but like in another country. So we got Yakuza, like a dragon. Welcome to the beat em up Grand Theft Auto Japan Street game Yakuza, colon, like a dragon. Jump into yet another world where you can customize your character to look like Hello Kitty teabagging the competition as you fight your way through the underworld. That is Japan's gang game. You fight your way to the boss and become your boss yourself, and but you're not in the you're not the bad guy, just a criminal based on circumstances and a family trope dying in the forest so you to you know take revenge. That otherwise you'd be at home watching anime. Um, that's two on the nose. I'll be right back. Um, but here's the latest dub and stuff from Alfred Alfred Hitchcock's 1945 movie Spellbound. I know there are a lot of people around, and I just got to get those special kumquats and also plantains that I need for cooking. You know, you want to eat, don't you? Because I can tell that you're hungry, and you need something to eat. Uh, I can skip my meal. It's no big deal. Listen, I know that there's a lot of people around here, and you're not so comfortable about going shopping by yourself, but I need you to do this for me. Okay. Do you need me to write down the list for you? Uh, I just don't see why you can't just shop here in town. It just makes more sense this way. Well, the thing is, the town next door has all the retail outlets that we could ever need. Uh, the line's too long. I don't know about this. Uh, uh, let's just go back. Okay. I got this. 
Oh, it's getting closer. Uh, uh, yeah, I changed my All you have to do is get a train ticket, okay? Not that hard. You can do this. Uh... <laughs> All right, who's next? Oh, come on, what do you need, sir? Just tell me what you want. Uh, is that you, Stony? Oh, I knew your mother. We were great friends. Please, just tell me what you need. I... I... Come on now, it's no big deal. Uh, plantains, do you got long ones? Uh, Stony, you know this is a train station. Oh, stupid. Why are you acting all uh, suspicious like? Come, Quats. Oh. I need a, 12 of them. You think that's possible? Well, of course I do. But you have to buy a ticket. This is a train station. You'll have one ticket. He just needs to get next door. If you can. Oh! oh. What? Oh, Let's look at this. What's going on here? Okay, okay, I'll give you the deal. Ah, oh, God, every time. What seems to be the problem uh, here? It's my husband. He's uh has anxiety. Oh, about what? Um, it's because I'm really hot and he's very intimidated by me. I'll give you a solid seven. He's from a small town. Come on now. It's okay. Uh, I'm not really that hard. beautiful. You don't oh, have to be too intimidated down. by me. Don't Listen, yell. One I don't ticket, think that makes sense. and he's gonna um, thank you. You've been really accommodating. I, I'm just not used to so many people around staring and... Oh, this young fella has it bad for you. I know, and doing the simplest tasks are so difficult for him. My name is my name Frank, Frank Caster, and this is my internal monologue. monologue. I'm that I'm cop, cop, and this is my story. story. Where, Where do, do I, I begin? begin? My accent, my accent is, is completely is fake, fake, but, but my, suspicion my suspicion is real. Okay, okay. Now all you gotta do is you get on that train, and then you gotta go to a store. Uh, make sure you go to the right store, and you can get me the kumquats and the plantains, and get yourself something nice. Do you think I can have two cake pops? What do you think I am, made of money? You can have one cake pop, and you can like it, okay? Are you sure you don't need me to write a list for no, you? No, I can remember everything to exact detail. I'll well, be yeah, fine. when you get a rush of anxiety, it feels as though that you can't do anything. Now repeat everything. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about City Council. City Council, they meet every Monday. Um, they also have committee meetings on Wednesday. So I'll be talking a little bit about some of the land stuff and some of the things that are happening and the proclamation. So let's kick things off with uh, something that really has been kind of rare in the City Council meetings and that's public comment. So uh, Carla Guell talk, um, talking about how her rent's going up and it has and what it may have to do with conjunction with the uh, new uh, additive pay structure when it comes to paying for your water and sewage. This is what she had to say. So today I just wanted to talk about um, while I understand the the change in the sewer utility bill um, was a very convenient uh, transition for a lot of property owners in Missoula. I know myself and several several other renters in the town. Um, their landlords have now decided that we are going to foot that bill since it started part of that monthly um, charge. And it's just more convenient for them to put that on our end, even though it uh, may not be that. So in the lease, they've gone through the process of changing the lease, updating that. And now we have an extra um, 15 to $20 a month that we're footing. Um, so uh, kind of an unwelcome surprise, but I understand that's how it um will be from now on, but I just wanted you to know there was an unintended consequence. I'm not sure if that was a concern that came up prior, but um, yeah, just wanted to pass that along. It kind of a bummer, but I guess it is how it is. So thanks for your time. Of course, Kara's story is not uncommon, and what some places do uh, is have flat rates when it comes to utilities. Um, the last apartment I lived in, I had to pay for my own electricity, um, but I didn't have to pay for water or uh, I guess, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much just the water. But when it comes to water usage uh, built in the utilities and something that seems can be um, um, contested when renewing the lease, I mean, a lot of times the uh, the landlord, the uh, rent owner, has the purview to kind of adjust the bill, but it has to be done uh, to a certain degree where it has to be, you need, it's like it's like inheriting debt. 
you know, like it, it's like you can't necessarily inherit debt unless you give permission to do it. I don't want to get to the finances of that as well, but renters' rights are very important to also really look into, is that the uh, landlord has the right to do something, but the renter has a right to dispute it and be like, hey, listen, um, this seems kind of unfair and you can't just do this without my consent. You can't just, you, you can raise the rent, which, you know, you got to let me know, but you can't raise it during the lease. So the lease has to be updated with the raises of the rent. So that was kind of, uh, that's the kind of thing that she was also mentioning in her public comment, but uh, kind of was looking for something to kind of uh, blame in terms of why her rent is going up. And that's what the landlord said, which uh, a lot of times it's not a really good thing to do. But hey, let's move it on. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to also mention is that um, during the committee meetings and they were talking a little bit about this uh, from the uh, pretty much uh, the city council has an oppositional voice when it comes to funding certain projects including uh, what when working with the M Missoula Redevelopment Agency and TIF funding tax increment financing so the a community center is being proposed from our part for more than a hundred Nineteen thousand dollars in TIF funding, and also two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars in TIF funding going to police station renovations on Catlin Street. Um, Sandra Fisaki supports the project, just not the means of funding. And this is what she had to say. Because while I agree that these facilities are absolutely desperately needed, um, I'm uncomfortable with um, using the TIF funds for this. I believe it is an appropriate use of um, of TIF dollars. I would prefer it to come out of the general fund. So. Um, we had a really good discussion about these two items on Wednesday, so I would encourage anybody um, who was interested in those conversations to go back and look at the discussion. But that is my reasoning for writing on those items tonight. In the state of Montana, TIF funding was kind of made as a tool for a lot of communities to mitigate blight. So if the developer was going to develop like an ugly, pretty beige um, apartment complex, I'm not attacking anyone in Missoula particularly, uh, but uh, in a lot of ways, it's a way for the city of Missoula to basically be like, hey, we're going to give you a tax break. Um, if you decide to make this into more of a modern kind of looking, the facade mostly, maybe some um, um, sidewalks and some street lights and stuff like that to be incorporated with this and we'll give you a tax break. Kind of like, you know, like double dipping a chip in two different pots just to kind of do that. But in terms of this particular thing, I can understand why Santa Verseki, Jesse Ramos, who wasn't in attendance, and John Contos uh, were not in favor of this is because the tax increment financing would just go to this because this is a city project and the city would have the developers make it for them. I don't know. It's it's a very interesting kind of murky waters as well as like that. But those items were approved by the majority of the city council um, uh, on this as well. But uh, TIF funding has always kind of been um, an interesting contested item. A lot of uh, Missoula residents actually voted for these individuals to be that opposing voice for a lot of the MRA TIF funding. Um, moving on. That's all I can really say about that. I don't know what I, where I kind of lean on it, um, but there's a lot of good things that TIFs have brought to the city. It, uh, in a lot of ways, there's a couple quotes and saying from the city council is that this is like one of their only tools in the arsenal to help leverage uh, positive development and growth in the city of Missoula. So really think about that. Moving on, Mayor John, John Engen reads a proclamation for the March for Meals, and this is what he had to say. Whereas uh, the Meals on Wheels program at Missoula Aging Services is a valuable resource to older adults in Missoula County. And whereas more than 800 homebound elders and adults with disabilities received Meals on Wheels in the past year, with 130,881 meals served in Missoula County, and whereas volunteer drivers for Meals on Wheels are the backbone of this program through their dedication to bring not only hot, nutritious meals to clients, but also caring, concern, and attention to their welfare. And whereas Missoula Aging Services counts on these volunteers and the support of the community to serve the growing numbers of elders who need this service in order to remain in their homes. And whereas we wish to raise awareness and support for Meals on Wheels in Missoula and surrounding areas, now therefore we, the Missoula Board of County Commissioners and the Mayor of the City of Missoula, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2021 as March for Meal, Meal Month, Meals Month, pardon me, in Missoula, Montana, and invite uh, citizens to thank the caring volunteer drivers, recognize the value of this service to homebound elders and adults with disabilities, and encourage citizens to volunteer as Meals on Wheels drivers 
so that elders may remain in their homes. And this proclamation is signed by me, as well as uh, David Strohmeyer, chair of the Missoula County Board of Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Josh Slotnick, and Commissioner Juanita Barrow. Missoula Aging Service is a very important part of the city of Missoula. It has been um, uh, very crucial in providing meals for uh, people who are disabled and people who are basically homebound. And it also gives the people a nice check-in to uh, just kind of see how, how they're doing. And especially in these times, it's a lot more crucial than ever. Uh, Dean Thompson with Meals on Wheels uh, speaks on this. We uh, promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and all those who care for them. And so with that effort, uh, we, we work to uh, make sure people who are homebound or have a uh, disability uh, receive meals. It's been an especially trying year, as you all know, with the COVID pandemic and our, our numbers uh, in serving people went up 40%. And uh, we serve about 325 people every day. We deliver meals to them. So our goal is to raise $85,000 throughout this month to help support that program annually and um, and be able to um, have our volunteers touch base with the uh, clients we serve. That's a, that's a huge, makes a huge difference in people's lives, having that volunteer check in every day. And we couldn't do it without the 70 plus volunteers that we have every single day uh, helping us through Missoula Aging Services. All right, so moving on to our next topic, and this is a, a, a community um, with a very uh, uh, Salish uh, background name. It's Siptucky, uh, Siptuckin is an area in which Missoula uh, City wants to create impact fees for Missoula housing area. So impact fees is the way for future development to pay for itself in terms of roads and sidewalks, and it would put the costs on the new homeowners in conjunction with the build grant. So build grant is the better utilized investment to leverage development. I've mentioned this a lot. The Mullen area is definitely looking to try to get as much federal funding for these projects as possible as we are growing out word towards England Boulevard, Mullen Road. It's basically called the Mullen area. There's going to be 54 plus acres that are going to be uh, converted into homes, apartment complexes, and just a nice variety of uh, development there, uh, all based on the opinions of the neighborhood itself and the developers moving forward on this. Um, City Council Member Jordan has comments on this. I think that the uh, Satupkin area um, master plan and, and the build grant uh, both uh, provide a, a visionary framework for this area. Um, and uh, the special impact fees help fund that in a way that's equitable, um, in a way where growth pays for itself, in a way where um, we are able to uh, plan and develop infrastructure on a large scale and, and achieve some economies of scale and um, achieve some, some orderly and predictable um, development of the area. So it's all good, um, very, uh, all, all good moving parts here. And um, I thank um, Public Works for uh, putting together this, um, this proposal and I'm happy to support it. So the city council voted in favor of the Subtucken um, impact fees. Uh, overall, the city uh, meeting was about 44 minutes. There wasn't too much to talk about, um, but there's are some of the highlights of this meeting. And if you want more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. I like checked out a couple of the committee meetings. It seems like it's most of most of it was. Um, going towards appointments, um, appointing people to certain degrees and rezoning, in which I will probably talk more about it in next Monday's meeting. But for further meetings and more, you can go on to this website for more information as well. All right, so up next, we got our latest COVID update. And since COVID's uh, kind of towards the uh, on the heels of ending uh, in terms of lockdowns and kind of stuff like that. A lot of uh, things moving forward, but uh, one of the things that definitely we're trying to do is trying to get the word out in vaccines and these health reports um, and these health department from the health department are moving towards more information when it comes to vaccines. And I'm gonna show you the latest clip for, by Cindy Farr. Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Tuesday, March 2nd, and this is our COVID briefing. We have had 8,215 cumulative positive cases of COVID-19 in Missoula County to date with 18 new cases since yesterday. We've had 82 deaths associated with COVID-19. We currently have 101 active COVID-19 cases and we have two Missoula County residents 
and six out-of-county residents currently hospitalized in Missoula County. Our average incidence per 100,000 people is now down to 13. The state of Montana is reporting 100,158 cumulative COVID cases, which is up 165 new cases since yesterday. There are now 1,587 active cases with 83 active hospitalizations across the state, and there have been 1,372 deaths related to COVID-19 statewide. The University of Montana has had 669 cumulative UM-associated cases since the beginning of fall semester back in August, with two new cases reported since yesterday, and there are currently, active, currently 11 active UM-associated cases. To date, there have been 29,566 doses of COVID vaccine administered in Missoula County, with 11,319 people having received both the first and second dose of vaccine. We continue to get around 1,500 doses of vaccine per week, but we expect that, that, that we will begin to see an increase as the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine re received emergency use authorization and will begin shipping across the country this week. So today marks one year exactly since we at the health department organized into the incident command system in order to respond to the then impending COVID pandemic. We've all seen many changes over the past year to our everyday lives, but at least now we're beginning to see an increase in the amount of vaccine becoming available. And hopefully that will mean that the end of the pandemic is on the horizon, while I still think it is probably going to be several months out. Today I'm going to talk about vaccine, the tiers used for prioritizing vaccine, when we think we might be opening up to phase 1B and what that might look like, and second doses of vaccine and a little bit about variants. First, I just want to say that if you qualify for a vaccination, don't hesitate to get signed up for an appointment. You're not only helping yourself, but you also help the community as a whole when you get vaccinated. Don't be bashful if you feel like you shouldn't qualify because maybe you feel like you're really healthy for your age or you have another type of hesitation. There will be enough vaccine for everyone in the coming months, and vaccination will go much more smoothly if everyone gets vaccinated when it's actually their turn rather than waiting. Next, I wanna talk about phase 1B tier two vaccinations. We continue to monitor the number of people who qualify under phase 1B tier one and compare it to those who qualify under that tier and expect to be able to open up tier two in the next few weeks. We're working on protocols in order to properly screen individuals with qualifying health conditions for when we do open tier two. We don't have an exact date yet, but we do expect that it will be mid to late March. So continue to check our Facebook page. You can keep an eye on the website at covid19.missoula.co and missoulainfo.com for announcements. Lots of folks who have had cancer previously are wondering if they will qualify in phase 1B tier two. And the answer to that is yes. Anyone with a history of cancer, whether it is in remission or not, and no matter what type of cancer that they had will qualify in that phase 1B tier two. Um, Johnson & Johnson will begin, will begin being allocated to Missoula County starting next week. And I just wanna let you know that in its phase three trial, Johnson & Johnson was 100% effective at preventing hospitalization and death due to COVID-19. It is the only single dose COVID vaccine approved right now. So if you get scheduled for a Johnson & Johnson vaccine appointment, you will not actually have to get a second dose appointment. You'll be totally covered with just that first dose. There are some misconceptions about the Johnson & Johnson efficacy rate. In some reports, its efficacy rate may appear lower than Pfizer and Moderna. And this is because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was tested against variants and, and tested globally, while the other two available vaccines were not. Johnson & Johnson is highly effective at preventing hospitalization and death, and we just want to encourage you to take whatever brand of COVID vaccine you are able to get, as they are all similarly effective at preventing the transmission of the strain of COVID circulating here, and more importantly, they're all very effective at preventing severe disease and death. I want to talk again about the second doses of vaccine. If you got your first dose at our Lucky's Market site with Pfizer or Moderna, your second dose will be 21 or 28 days later at the exact same time as your first appointment. Um, you will get a phone call from the health department just to remind you of that appointment in the couple of days before, before that second dose appointment. We are not rescheduling any appointments except for on a case-by-case -case basis for patients who are experiencing a serious emergency. Getting your second dose should be a top priority we have hundreds of patients booked each day on a very precise schedule that helps keep 
everyone socially distanced. And so rescheduling an appointment is incredibly difficult for us to do. Also, just a reminder that you cannot get any sort of vaccine two weeks before or after the COVID vaccine um, is administered to you. So please hold off on your shingles vaccine, flu shots, or any other vaccines that you're considering if you have plans to get a COVID-19 vaccine um, in the foreseeable future. It's just better to hold off on those other vaccines just so it doesn't interfere with that COVID vaccine. Last, I just want to let you know that no COVID variants have been detected in Montana so far. The labs are testing random samples for the variants, but they haven't popped up here yet. Um, I also want you to just keep in mind that wearing a mask, washing your hands, social distancing, and keeping your social circles small are still incredibly important. While our numbers are remaining low, we do still have COVID circulating in our community, and we want to keep those case counts low and manageable. There's no sense in losing the progress that we've made so far. So let's all keep up the good work and keep using those prevention measures until we can get through to the end of the pandemic. So that's all I have for you today. As always, you can subscribe to me on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Click that notification bell so you get notified when additional videos are uploaded. Um, you can follow us on Facebook at the Missoula City County Health Department Facebook page. You can call 258-INFO if you have questions about what vaccine clinics might be available, if you have general questions about COVID-19, if you are having any symptoms and you would like to get scheduled for a COVID um, test out at our Flynn Lane drive through testing facility, um, or if you want to know what resources might be available to you in the community. Um, you can also check out our website at MissoulaInfo.com. We post all of our um, data there. So all the numbers that I talked about today, as well as their corresponding graphs and, and lots and lots of other information and FAQs on COVID-19 and the vaccine. Um, so until Thursday, everybody stay healthy. Hey guys, welcome back. That was uh, your health board update. And now let's talk a little bit about some MCAT news. Not too much is going on this week as well. I just got a uh, uh, kind of sad news, which uh, to me is uh, very disappointing, is that uh, our Virtual First Friday is uh, kind of no longer moving forward. Virtual First Friday was uh, to invite a lot of art galleries to kind of showcase a lot of their new uh, exhibits in their museum. And for the most part, I've basically kind of gathered a lot of the footage and kind of prepackaged it to be released on MCAT. But for right now, um, uh, the Arts Museum, uh, who have been um, kind of having this being done are kind of like kind of stepping back. A lot of the steam has kind of slowed down with the, uh, uh, with the changing of the times as well. But I also wanted to mention that uh, I also heard word from the Zach is that they will be slowing down their social distancing sessions, but not until at least uh, late April. And they're looking into doing some more shows and more venues, comedy shows and stuff like that. But so far uh, this weekend, you can expect a mudslide Charlie. Um, it's going to be the band performing. Uh, they're going to do another comedy pandemic birthday special, uh, which is happening the, uh, the Saturday after. But this weekend, you can expect Mudslide Charlie to be at 7.30 p.m. All these social distancing sessions will be there as well. Um, let's see. Yeah. So that's kind of what's happening in terms of events, what MCAT's going to be streaming. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, MCAT is a, a, a is a is a great source for a lot of people. If you are a nonprofit and you're a group here in the city of Missoula, you can get in contact with MCAT. You can go to our webpage at MCAT.org. Uh, we have our number up there. We have our email, our contact information all on MCAT.org. And it is a wonderful source for people to submit programs. So if you already are somebody who makes videos and just wants more exposure, you can uh, give it to us. We're always looking for more videos to be put on our channel. Um, you can also... Uh, ask us to do uh, programs for you as well. Um, one of the things is that you do have to represent a nonprofit. We are non-commercial, and we we try not to be in direct competition with any other uh, TV stations in town who are commercial, NBC, uh, CBS, uh, Fox affiliates, uh, and all that stuff. So as a public access station, we are supposed to be free speech only and just to allow people to kind of um, have a platform for them to ex uh, uh, flux their free speech. Um, but, you know, I've probably talked about this many times, but um, I think MCAT is a great resource for a lot of people. It's just the thing is, is that we can't open up to the public 
and we're still waiting on the final word from the Missoula Public Library and the health department to allow us to open up for the public so we can start checking out equipment to the folks as well. But um, that's kind of what's going on there as well. But we are always interested in going out into the field and helping people make their projects move forward, much like the uh, Zootown Arts Community Center social distancing sessions. Um, but yeah. That's about it for my morning show. I kept it kind of short for sure, but I wanted to kind of show you some clips that I found uh, this week to be pretty, uh, pretty great uh, and more. So without further ado, I wanted to thank you. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.